Hey everyone, welcome to the channel for another Escape from Tarkov video. In this one, I'm taking a slight deviation from my weapon builds to take a look at the combat stimulants available in Escape from Tarkov. While they're often expensive, they can provide you some huge bonuses if used correctly and at the right time. I've been getting a lot of questions on stream this wipe about what stimulants are worthwhile to use and which ones are the most powerful, especially since a lot of crafting options for these stims have been made available over the course of the 12.6 patch. In this video, I'll be splitting the stimulants up based on what they're used for and explaining their effects, what they can be used for, and how you can get your hands on them. These items are not really the center point of budget or early game loadouts, but once you're high level and have enough money to start getting luxury items, some of these stimulants can be a huge benefit to you. So with that intro out of the way, let's take a look at some of the stims available in Escape from Tarkov, starting with the healing stims that can help keep you alive and fighting through the pain. First up in this video, we have what I would call the most powerful healing stim, and arguably the most powerful healing item in the game, the ETGC Regenerative Stimulant. This one is easily recognizable by its bright green color, and is all around a useful stim with almost no truly negative effects. This stim is all about health regeneration, and as far as I know, using the ETG stim gives you the fastest passive healing in the game. Using this stim gives you the following buffs. Your metabolism and immunity skills are increased by 20 points for 90 seconds, which is honestly a pretty minor buff and is barely noticeable. The effect you will notice though is 60 seconds of health regeneration at 6.5 points per second, which equals out to a possible total of 390 HP healed over 60 seconds. This targets all points on the body and will continue healing as long as the effect is still active. What this means is that a single ETG stim can effectively heal you from 10% to full HP in 60 seconds while you're still free to move, shoot, loot, pack mags, or use CMS kits. ETG is incredibly useful for healing during or after a big firefight, since you can pop it, repair black limbs and watch them heal on the fly, speeding up how long it takes to get back into the game. It also heals right through bleeding and other damage, meaning you can keep fighting and not worry about bleeding out for at least a minute. Personally, I think this is the most useful stim, which is why I covered it first. The debuffs on this one are also really minor, which just makes it even better. For debuffs, after 65 seconds, energy recovery, endurance, and health are reduced by 3 to 5 points for about a minute, which is a very minor debuff compared to other stims. To acquire the ETG stims, you can find them in med bags, medical loot areas, on dead scavs, all over labs, and you can barter them from therapists in exchange for 5 bottles of shampoo at level 4. It's not cheap or overly easy to acquire, but ETG is extremely useful as a healing item and is always in my gamma once I'm rich enough to afford it consistently. Next, we have the little brother of the ETG stim, Propitol in the bright yellow syringe, which is a combined painkiller and mild healing item combined into one, making it fairly useful, but with some drawbacks thrown in to balance it out. After using Propitol, you get pain killing effects for 4 minutes, which is useful all by itself because of how fast you can inject it. In addition to this, your metabolism, health, and vitality all increase by 20 for 5 minutes, which means you have slightly more resistance to bleeding and fractures, which is a nice bonus. On top of all this, Propitol also gives you a very slight health regen effect, adding 1 point per second of regen over the course of 5 minutes. It can heal a total of 300 HP, but at an extremely slow rate. Propitol is nowhere near as good as ETG at healing a large injury quickly, but it does work very well when used to heal the last bits of chip damage from bleeding, running on a black leg, or damage spread out from being shot in a black limb. For debuffs, Propitol will give you the tremor effect and tunnel vision on your character during the last 30 seconds of its effect. These definitely hurt if they happen during a fight, but the duration is pretty short. Overall, Propitol is very useful in a lot of situations, and is kind of like a supercharged morphine with some added buffs. You can acquire Propitol by looting any med area, and you can also buy it or craft it. To buy it, Therapist sells Propitol for around 25,000 rubles, and you can also find it on the flea market, often at a cheaper price. To craft Propitol, you can use one Ibuprofen, one Golden Star, and two piles of meds, which will craft you seven Propitol stims. I think this is a pretty worthwhile crafting recipe, especially if you like carrying Propitol instead of morphine or another painkiller. Next up, the last of the pure healing based stims is called Zagustin, which is basically a hyper powerful bandage that prevents bleeding altogether. After using Zagustin, all active bleeding on your character will stop, 
which can be useful if you have a lot of bleeds all at once. In addition, it has a unique effect that completely prevents new bleeding from happening for 3 minutes, which is kind of a cool effect that can help you run some pretty sick gauntlets without worrying about stopping the heal bleeding. You also gain 20 vitality for the 3 minute effect time, which will make fractures less likely as well. For debuffs, Zagustin makes your hands tremor and drains your hydration for 40 seconds right at the end of its effect time, and decreases your metabolism a bit as well. All things considered, Zagustin is a very situational stim, but in that situation where you have a lot of active bleeding and it might be the only thing that saves your life, it can be a much better alternative to a bandage on a hotkey. For this next one, Adrenaline kind of falls in the middle ground between a healing stim and a combat or looting stim, because it does have some mild healing effects, but its most potent effects give you an edge in combat or faster movement. For health effects, Adrenaline removes pain and the contusion or concussion effect for 60 seconds, which isn't very long, but often just long enough to get out of whatever situation forced you to pop it in the first place. You also gain 4 points of health regen for 15 seconds, which again is very mild, but it's just enough to counter a bleeding arm or something else for long enough to win a fight and get to cover. Adrenaline also increases your endurance and strength by 20 points for 60 seconds, which means you can move faster and run farther while this effect is active, which helps you get places faster or escape a dangerous area more quickly. Finally, Adrenaline also increases your recoil control skill by 15 points for 60 seconds, making your full auto sprays considerably more accurate. For debuffs, Adrenaline just lowers your energy and hydration recovery and stress resistance slightly for between 30 to 60 seconds, which is a fairly mild debuff. All these buffs are short in duration, but they're very versatile. If you pop Adrenaline after getting hit, it gives you health regen, prevents you from getting stuck on a black leg, makes you move faster and shoot better, which is kind of the perfect storm of PvP buffs. It also works well at the start or end of a match to help you get to the loot faster or to extraction faster because of the strength and endurance increase. All around, Adrenaline is pretty helpful, but has to be used at just the right moment, otherwise the effects wear off and it becomes a waste. You can buy Adrenaline from Therapist level 4 after completing the Athlete quest for 30,000 rubles, or you can loot it from med spawns and generally find it on the market for a pretty reasonable price. Next up, we have the blue SJ6 stim, which I would say is easily the second most useful stim in Escape from Tarkov, second to the ETG stim. Where the ETG stim keeps you alive during a heated firefight, the SJ6 is what you pop afterwards to haul your 75 kilograms of loot out to extraction. After using SJ6, your max stamina is increased by 50, and you get forced stamina recovery of 2.5 points, both for 4 minutes. What this means is that you'll have more stamina to run farther, and your stamina is forced to recover even when it's being drained by walking while overweight or sprinting. This is one of my absolute favorite items for doing mega stacked looting runs, because you can go all the way up to 75 kg of loot and then just pop an SJ6 and sprint like a madman to extraction. It doesn't speed up your walking speed, but it allows you to recover stamina even when walking overweight, which allows you to carry way more loot out to extraction than most other players. It's kind of a high risk play, since you still walk pretty slow and SJ6 is pretty expensive, but if you have a good line to extraction, this stim allows you to carry mountains of loot out and make gigantic profits on a good run. For debuffs, SJ6 just gives you tremors and tunnel vision for the very last 40 seconds of its effect, which should ideally be right when you're about to extract anyway, and therefore not a problem. You can get SJ6 in multiple ways, as mentioned before. Med spawn areas frequently spawn stims, and you can buy and craft SJ6. To buy it, you need to trade Therapist level 4, 2 saline bottles, and 1 hydrogen peroxide. Personally though, I think the crafting option is the best way to go on this one. At the med station level 3, you can use 1 saline, 2 piles of meds, and 1 SJ1 stimulant to craft 2 SJ6. This is definitely the cheapest method, and you can find all of these items in raid to craft the SJ6 if you know where to look. Personally, I always try to carry one of these in my container when I'm going to reserve or labs to do a huge loot run, because you can stack up on items, pop it, and then hotfoot it to extraction. The last stim I have to cover in this video is the SJ1 stimulant, which all around is useful to make your character move faster. After using SJ1, you gain 25 points of stress resistance, strength, and endurance for 3 minutes, which makes you move significantly faster, and you can sprint a lot farther. The stress resistance does have some minor benefits, but mostly this stim allows you to cover a lot of ground more quickly, making it very useful to pop, say at the start of a shoreline match, and beat everyone to the resort. For debuffs, SJ1 reduces hydration and energy recovery slightly for just over 3 minutes, which is a very mild and almost unnoticeable debuff. 
SJ-1 can be bartered at therapist level 2 using two syringes and one UV lamp, which is a pretty cheap trade overall and easy to find in raid. You can also use seven piles of meds, two saline, three propital, and one morphine to craft five SJ-1 stims in the hideout. This is kind of a big crafting recipe, and honestly I think those saline bottles would be better used to just craft SJ-6 instead. However, I do think SJ-1 is quite useful, especially if you really want to beat the competition to a certain area on the map. Well that covers it for this look at the combat stims in Escape from Tarkov. Hopefully this video helps you to sort out what they all actually do and what situations each one is most useful in. They definitely aren't cheap, especially as a replacement for painkillers on a hotkey, but they're also fairly easy to find in raid or craft, and some of them give such a huge benefit that they're easily worth the rubles if you have them to spare. In any case, I hope you enjoyed the video and got some solid info out of it. I'll be streaming more Escape from Tarkov on Twitch, and it'd be great to have you drop by the stream sometime, so I'll link that down in the description. I've also got links to my Twitter and Discord server down below, as well as my Patreon page for anyone looking to join the community or support the channel. Thanks for checking out the video, feel free to leave any comments, corrections, or suggestions down below, and until next time, stay safe in Tarkov City.